Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I walk through some cool tools, completely unsponsored, uh, that I have found throughout the year, and I do an honest review summary at the end of each of these videos. I've been doing this for three years, so if there is a technology that you don't see in this season's Honest Review series, make sure you check down below in the description to see all of the others that I have done. All right, and so the technology we are going to be reviewing today is... If you are interested in finding out my honest review about this technology, make sure you stick around. My name is Prasad Yalamanchi. I'm the founder and CEO of Lead Semantics. We do text distill, we develop and market text distill, which is extracting knowledge from text documents. You know, text holds all the knowledge. So text distill, once uh, fed with the documents, it naturally understands the documents and automatically creates the knowledge graph and then generates on top of it, uh, you know, language generates its summary, uh, summaries off of the knowledge graph. You know, in that sense, I mean, this entire thing of understanding is totally automated through this pipeline. And, and what we are doing in case in point, you know, so we are working with Dow Jones Factiva. Uh, they are a news aggregator and, you know, they, uh, you know, sell uh, news as service. And so we are working together to deliver knowledge graph analytics on, uh, you know, on their news streams. So these news articles are fed to text distill and, you know, out comes this uh, ESG signal in this case, you know, that's uh, one of the examples. And then you can actually verify if the signal is correct or not by looking at the underlying knowledge graph and you know comparing it with the, the corresponding text snippet. Give you uh, you know what text distill is uh, technically speaking in just two uh, quick one minute. It's a hybrid solution across language models and linguistics and semantic technology. All the three of them are equal pillars uh, mm -hmm. for supporting text distill. You know so we don't depend heavily on just the language models alone. Uh, and we have a good wrapper on linguistics and that's why we are able to pull you know quite a good performance in terms of accuracies and things like that mm -hmm. you know so we can build a starter knowledge graph in days not weeks or months mm -hmm. you know literally and all you need is your domain specific documents text documents that may be lying around uh, and then you know so some starter concepts here and there and so we can pull together a knowledge graph very quickly and embellish them and you know iterate through kind of getting your first versions second versions and so on it's well and it, it it depends on the the quality of the text that you have though too right so if you have absolutely, absolutely, this ocr yeah. you know content that's uh, highly for formatted um, right right absolutely. then yeah then then you're gonna have some some more uh, hurdles but um if right. you have good xml or good text in general then I, I can see how you can create those links between things. So how do you do disambiguation though in, in some of this? So if you're if you're feeding in all of the text, obviously you yeah. can do some disambiguation by contextualization, but yeah. there's still going to be a lot of things that are um, the same yeah. word and you can't tell the difference. Absolutely. I mean, so this is where we rely heavily on ontology and the taxonomy. And then our entity linking is like a very beefed up you know, system mm -hmm. at the back end. You know, so, you know, and because we start with some sample documents mm -hmm. and then so we go through all of the sample documents. So hopefully all the representative concepts and their, you know, a box instances are there in these documents. And okay. So, so the documents have to be pre-tagged then to, to make sense of them. Right. You yeah. Know, so okay. we, right. You know, so very few documents and, and then we iterate from there, you know, taking the help of the ontology and the taxonomy. So we have mm -hmm. a, a synthetic data generator as well, mm -hmm. uh, pretty, uh, you know, very strong. I mean, so it generates a lot of, lot of text. And so with uh, verifications, a little bit of verifications, we produce, you know, many more uh, possibilities in terms of phrases and grams and, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the base, you know, the basics are, yeah. I mean, that that's why I want to make sure that for the audience, it's yeah. not a silver bullet, right? Like you definitely still need to look at it and, and, and put the time and effort into making sure that it meets your needs and that yeah. cont the contextualization is accurate. And, you know, Prasad, what, how what, how does it work when um, you need to update the model? Do how does text distill? Do you have to retrain the whole model because you're adding new documents with maybe new concepts, or can you just manipulate the knowledge graph and that would would take care That's of? That's a great question. Great question. We run into those issues depending on our NLP experts. Uh, there are uh, uh, they are in both camps actually. There are some that want to have a single monolithic, uh, you know. Uh, model that gets retrained with any new concept that you want to because there is a lot of interplay between these concepts as well because they're all kind of picked up from the same sentences and so on mm. you know and so but you know for a practical performance standpoint we have almost like seven or eight different models that kind of you know get at different variables of interest if you mm. you know locate just finance or esg and so on and so you know usually we end up kind of you know adding these text data or new you know, sample concepts uh, to one of those models and then we would have to you know retrain them 
you know because okay. we have to because there are a lot of overlapping uh, you know adjectives and you know things like that that kind mm-hmm. of you know when you talk about green variables and things like that like mm-hmm. climate related green variables like and, energy and, and you know things like that they appear in all kinds of contexts and when like you power, retrain you know, the model like, yeah if you retrain the model um when you yeah. add new concepts in if i had to correct things in the first model would those changes still be honored or would i have to redo all of that work so we we kind of you know have the original training data uh, and so it's like a, the easiest raw method that we go through depending on our timelines is to retrain the whole thing with all right. the original training data we add this new train training data you know do all the verification on the data a mm-hmm. lot of effort there and then retrain the model one mm-hmm. more time and these concepts are kind of you know pretty because they have a cost associated with it we don't uh, kind of you know just add uh, willy nilly new concepts uh, you know upfront you know so version of an ontology second version of an ontology is like a big move mhm okay all right and so if you're going through that effort it's almost like you're kind of signing up for all the additional work because those new concepts are going to change the fabric of the ontology anyways but it's good to know for for those that are yeah. looking into that so this is our tool text distill so usually this is like a server side process but we have a a tool that allows you to debug and see what is happening on in a small number of uh, articles mm-hmm. you know the same pipeline that may be you know unleashed on like a million documents at the back end you would want to sample some of those documents and see you know how is it producing in terms of right. you know, the knowledge right make sure that you have the right text to to do Absolutely. what you're trying to do right you know right text and the right uh, extractions you know so you can see all of them in a the graph format and you know correlate with the text and so on. you know that's the idea so mm-hmm. i will uh, show you we have uh, uh, several corpuses but i think we are configured here to do esg related uh, documents and so what does esg is, mean uh, this is environmental social governance thank you uh, which is like you know the climate and sustainability related mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, articles mm-hmm. uh, so we have uh, several articles here right and so we can scroll up and down and select you know some of these articles and they go on and you know all that so we can select like you know these articles and see what type of you know uh, first of all let's see what these articles are you know so i'll just show you this article so if you are able to see the screen i can uh, you, so this is like a regular news article that may have come in uh, Dow Jones and Company, yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is like a regular news article, running text, and so on, right? So we can go back to this, and uh, we can probably just see what would be the knowledge extracted from this document. All right. So when you're in this, um, yeah. it looks like you're fact checking, but you're not actually checking facts; you're extracting them, right? So we have we have in the back end the text is still pipeline is working on this, and it is now it is working. It is generating the facts, and now we can check the facts as well. You know. so it is check it has extracted the facts it has inserted into the knowledge graph or the triple story at the back end now we are uh, these and are all it, the so is it an rdf uh, yes. triple story okay yeah and that's your right uh, i'm sorry is that did you build a triple store behind this or could i connect it to a triple store if i already have one so we already have one i mean you know so we are using vendor triple store we can connect to you know any number of uh, you know vendor triple stores mm mm-hmm. okay you know so all of the standard uh, triple stores because we output n quads when it comes to triple stores mm-hmm. or n triples you know depending on what it is in this case it is n quads quads is the you know the subject predicate object with the you know actual triple id uh-huh. as the fourth element so it is quad you know that is a rdf standard format so you can so you can connect to property graph or triple store is that what i'm hearing yes i mean okay. we prefer triple stores because you know mm-hmm. we do reasoning and you know all of that as well mm-hmm. uh, but you know okay. because the extractions are a shallow ontology applied And mm-hmm. so they can very easily, not easily. It's the, by default they can go into a Neo4j type property graphs. Okay, great. So the text distill has worked on the document. So there was one document, and it has broken into fourteen, you know, text blocks. So it's running text with all the labeling that it has done, with the highlighted NERs and you know things like that, concepts that it has identified, and it has you know extracted the facts, extracted the relationships, inserted into the triple store, and issued a query to pull out the entire graph corresponding to this document. You know, mm-hmm. so that's what you're seeing. on the right hand side so we can actually further interrogate this you know so uh, in terms of you know just uh, for example you can click on a, a a node here and it you know so it shows you which text node is pulling out the facts each edge is a fact mm-hmm. and so you can probably verify and see you know so axiona energia announced uh, so you can see that it is connected to axiona energy here you know mm-hmm. 180 million in here and i can bring out the predicate labels as well mm mm-hmm. uh, you know what what is it thinking in terms of what it has understood so barr is a business arrangement between axiona energy and uh, san juan something and that's from the tags that the taxonomy that you understand right barr is is in that okay 
Correct, exactly. Yeah. So it's the, it's driven by that ontology. So I will bring out the edge labels as well for this. So it will kind of you know further clarify some of these things. Uh, I mean, there is some whole graph management type uh, predicates also, but uh, you know there is 180 million that were you know put and received. So it was not able to uh, detect you know how to say whether it has put or not, but it is detected you know 180 million and so on. Mm -hmm. But you know so all the things are you know we can go to another block. Uh, maybe here so you can go both ways you know so from text to uh, the graph and from the graph to the text you know if there mm -hmm. is any facts that are extracted uh, you know you can go both ways in this case i just clicked on uh, one text block s8 so you can come back here in this text s8 and you know see what has been extracted from here and this is all from one document this is all from one document so now if you are curious you know we can go back and then you know uh, just bring out two documents for example and that is the fantastic use case for uh, you know the uh, the knowledge graph side of it. So mm -hmm. we have picked up, you know, one, maybe we can get three documents. Mm -hmm. So it has now loaded three documents. Uh, and so it has brought out all these predicates. Mm -hmm. So each document gets a color, different color. Okay. And if there are any overlaps, you know, they get connected, you know. Mm -hmm. And we see different colors getting connected, you know, and we can bring out the node labels once and let it settle in. Well, it's interesting, too, because in your last um, page, there was a similarity score and yeah. it said zero, but there's connections between these documents. So they would have some similarity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we are not showing the, the the prediction similarity scores. You know, that is all of the back end. This is once it conforms to the ontology defined, you know, either a predicate or the node. Mm -hmm. We are exporting this. And so this is exported for the visual verification because we are doing it in a one off. We are not going through all the documents. Sure, right? so, sure. So you can check to see that, you know, you can scroll down different documents, either click on anything that you may think of, and then that can highlights here. And we'll get into the next part of it, you know. So we'll actually follow through a particular query a mm -hmm. result and then, you know, follow back and come back to this thing and see if it has produced the right extractions. Right. And it's also important for the audience to remember that a lot of this knowledge is coming from the taxonomy and the business rules that are already understood and yeah. then extracting the text from documents to then yeah. see how it populates that logic. Exactly. And ontology serves a very big purpose there, mm -hmm. you know, because when we coin that, you know, all the relationships and predicates and, you know, things like that, there is a bit of, uh, you know, going back and forth in terms of, is this the right way to mm -hmm. understand the domain? So you have to create from scratch the ontology before this will work effectively. Is that accurate? That is accurate, but it, okay. is, it, it is not as uh, difficult as it sounds, you know, because we start with the the queries that the customer is interested in initially mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. and the I like that you're starting with the, the use case. <laughs> yeah, the use case, yes, yeah. in your terminology. Yeah. And so it would have the concepts. And so we are kind of unraveling. Uh, with the customer and in the context of the few documents they shared with us in the beginning. And so are you creating the ontology for the customer or is it literally in a day, you know, we'll create the first version of the ontology, very shallow ontology that support that, you know, supports the, you know, extraction mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 within days, we produce the first version and then we go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and oftentimes, I mean, knowledge graphs beyond a point uh, on the other side, there are, you know, a little more knowledgeable, you know, uh, technical folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like that, that, that you are helping those that may not know much about graph, if they have a, a, a SQL query that they are constantly using or they know is high value and they want to see if they can use graph to answer these questions in a more economic way or a more robust, way, you know, whatever uh, metric they're using to decide to go with graph or not, you can then yeah. help them create an ontology from that to yeah. at least get the buy-in. I think that, that what you're showing here is just a few examples where you would say like, hey, here's what we can do with this now, um, with yeah. the, the text that we have. So this isn't the full blown you know, graph because this is just three documents, but this right. is giving exactly. your yeah. stakeholders an idea of what that would look like. Absolutely. Right, and so right now we're just testing the water. So what does that look like, the, the end result? Like once we've done this testing, we, we say, yep, this model looks accurate. What's, yeah. what's next? And I will go to the actual use case, you know, which we are, uh, it's called the text BI. So it, it, you give it a, a corpus. And so it's news articles in this case. And the category there, uh, ESG is the category. So among news articles, there are all kinds of categories. And we have configured for this one signal, ESG signal. The definition, this is more like a query or a, a signal right. that folks mm -hmm. are interested in. So underlying, there are 110 articles in this particular use case. 
So if you were to normally to pick up this signal, you would have to read all these documents. You, you do not know where to stop or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You have to read all these things. So this is saying, you know, find me the signal, you know, and the signal says A company, organization A is investing in B or C and so on. Mm -hmm. And A or B or C or whatever is reporting on a green variable with a metric mm -hmm. and a measure and has a claim, you know, of going up or down by a year, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So that is what the signal that they want to see if uh, these articles have it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, and also, I mean, when you're, when yeah. you're extracting this, like you don't have to put it into a graph. Like I'm just looking at this and you would have, yeah. this could be a table really. Like you don't have to have a graph to answer this. You don't have to answer uh, but to, uh, to extract this from text, you know, to put it into the table would be even, you know, you would have navigated through the graph, uh, you know, midpoint and then, you know, uh, done more work mm. because uh, text already holds concepts that are, you know, tied in the manner of, you know, what facts can fit into a triple stone. Sure. I mean, that's, that's my point. Like text is still is, is extracting these things and you're doing it using, you know, those linguistic properties that kind of create a triple. Yeah. But if you didn't want the um, output of this to go into a graph, you could take this and, and get those, basically you're getting the answers to that query. You could put that yeah. into um, regular table structure if you needed to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Clearly, you know, because it's a, once the structure is there, you know, once you know, it's a triple, you know, so A is related to B through this kind of a label, you know, that ends up becoming a column in a table somewhere if you organize the schema, yeah. you know, so, you know, so our entire premise is that, you know, so what the text is very close to knowledge. I mean, in fact, knowledge, the best way to communicate knowledge is text or language. Mm -hmm. And so if you have text, I mean, you know, it's a direct, the shortest path to knowledge. And so once you have the knowledge, I mean, we have, uh, you know, the knowledge structures and you know, all of that, uh, why not take advantage of the knowledge? And the beauty of this is that, you know, next hundred thousand articles or next hundred articles can easily be put through the same pipeline and poured into the triple store and see all the connections backwards, you know, historically mm -hmm. what may be existing already without having to plan for it. Mm -hmm. You know, so all the benefits of the graph and knowledge. Yep, and all yep. that, right? So I will, you know, so I know some companies exist already. So I will kind of, you know, type some of these things to see what happens. So I'm saying, you know, does Shell have anything to do with this? You know, so uh, it, it obviously in these 110 documents, you know, it has produced uh, you know, some nine results for ESG extraction, because our goal is to look for, you know, what kind of signal there exists for ESG. And so here is where we will start to see, you know, so these are the signals. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, six different signals have been identified among these underlying documents. In this case, two documents, you know, each uh, right arrow or, uh, you know, angle bracket here mm -hmm. is pointing to two headlines, you know, so two different articles have produced this one signal, which is saying Shell gets into business arrangement with BP and Shell reports low carbon fuels increase by 820,000 tons, you know? Mm -hmm. So this directly doesn't exist as a sentence anywhere or sentences. You know, this is made up, our language generation has made up from the knowledge graph, mm -hmm. you know? So we can verify this, you know? So now you would be curious, you know, there are two documents that are producing this, let's go check it out, right? Mm -hmm. So we can go, you know, click on the fact check. And so it goes here, it loads those two documents. So it loads those two documents and, you know, it's just pulling the knowledge graph underneath. I forgot the summary, so I will mm -hmm. go back to that. Um, so it is saying Shell is in a business arrangement with BP, right? And then Shell is reporting 82,000 82, or 820,000. Is there 000. any um, confidence scores on some of these? Is that what is ranking them? I, I'd be a so, little concerned that, you know, I, if I was going into to, to fact verification, which is what you're showing here, I would want yeah. to start with the lowest or something that um, I would want to fact check. Um, right. Not so the stuff that's very high. One thing actually to your point here, so they would not have been shown or connected in this graph if they did not cross a threshold that we have set already. Oh, good. Okay. So there is you something know? that- Oh, yeah. Can, okay, set. Right. That's good. Right. So, um, so here we are saying Shell, again, I will just go back. Shell is in arrangement with BP. And then Shell is reporting this, right? So I will maximize this. So we'll look up Shell. So here is Shell. And it is uh, in arrangement with BP. So there is a business arrangement that it is connecting to. For example, this business arrangement is coming from this particular text block. So if I click here, BP and Shell, you know, just by mere mention of this is, you know, it is figured out that there is an arrangement between them. Yep. So we can fact check there um, in right. the document. That's good. So you're going through, if you need something to help you generate um, 
signals that you already know exist in your full text, but you need some help extracting them in a way that you can then go in and verify them and then use them for whatever you need in your business. This yep. is helpful. Um, and then I'm assuming also, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you have a graph database that you're using, uh, you don't need to manage your graph here. This is just to get some of the, the facts and the triples and things extracted and put into a format that you can actually use. You would yep. use still your regular graph management systems, whatever you're doing um, to, to manage that. You are very correct. You know, okay. so this is to verify your, you know, your ontology, is, is it working right? Your thresholds, are they working right? And you are testing, you know, 100 documents, maybe 10 documents, 20 documents, right? Mm -hmm. And when once you are, uh, you know, very you know, confident about, you know, what it's doing, then you unleash that on all these hundreds of thousands of documents. Sure. And the other important thing is, you know, the signal itself, while it seems very simple, in order to get to that signal, you, you would have to read all these documents. You know? Sure. So the so entire the NLP is, side of it, you know, you have to engage one way or another. Otherwise, humans yeah. are left to read these things. Yeah. So so you're basically um, using this to extract all of those things to put into a triple store that you have, and then you can use that for whatever um, graph analytics that, that you need. 